Hey, welcome everyone to week five of Living the Good Life, our journey through the teaching of Jesus called the Sermon on the Mount. Now, before we really get started, I want to pause for a minute and just say that it's possible at this point you're understanding just how challenging and difficult the words of Jesus really are. Quick review. We talked about being poor in spirit and what it means to realize that you're entirely spiritually inadequate as you are. But when we lean on Jesus for everything we need, we find that the kingdom of Jesus is open to us. We've talked about mourning and being honest about the different kinds of things that bring us grief and pain and tears, but knowing that we will be comforted. We spent time on humility and trying to come to terms with believing that God is in control and accepting whatever he has for us. Last week, we walked through hunger and thirst for righteousness and acknowledging that we have a tendency to pursue desires and longings that exist in us, but the ultimate pursue is after things that are right, the desire for things to be right in us and around us. So if you're watching this with a group, you might need to spend a few minutes just making some connections between all the things we've looked at, how do they work together, and how do they make things more challenging. And as challenging as some of those things might be, I also hope what you're learning is that the words of Jesus bring a whole new way of thinking and living that truly is leading us into this good life that we all want to have. So as we come to today's section, try to picture once again the crowd around Jesus as he teaches this revolutionary way to live with God and with each other and be reminded of what kind of people find a place in this kingdom of his. He begins this way. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for the kingdom of heaven is theirs. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the humble, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they will be shown mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called sons of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted because of righteousness, for the kingdom of heaven is theirs. You're going to get tired of hearing this, but that's okay. Blessed is the word makarios, which means that you have the favor of God on your life. You're truly living the good life when you are these kind of people. And today we're looking at this section where Jesus says, Blessed are the merciful, for they will be shown mercy. The first century world, much like ours today, lacked mercy. It was a world built on intimidation, violence, force, and judgment. It was also full of a lot of people, especially religious people, who prided themselves on being good people and right with God. They achieved this primarily through a religious and spiritual checklist rather than a relationship with God that was truly from their heart. And when you're proud of being so good that you don't need God, it's really hard to value mercy. There were definitely people in the crowd who valued their ability to prove themselves righteous. So Jesus, looking at this crowd made up of his newest and closest followers, the down and out of society and religious people, says that the truly blessed person who has God's favor on them are the merciful. You know that you need it and you're willing to give it. Now, this video is a little different than the weekend teaching, so if you haven't heard that, you're going to want to go back and catch it. I spend a lot of that time talking about what it actually looks like to be merciful through a story called The Good Samaritan. You should definitely review that with your group, but I'm not going to repeat it here. I want to go a little bit different direction and ask this question, what do we really mean by merciful? It's the Greek word, la imon. It means that you're kind, you treat people with compassion, this mercy is willing to pardon someone who's in the wrong, and it gives attention to those who are in misery. Let me give you a couple of pictures to help. When we lived in North Carolina, there was a special judicial action you could request in traffic court called a prayer for judgment. It allowed you to beg for mercy from the judge for your violation, and he might grant you mercy and in that case, we would say it was undeserved. 
how about this? Have you ever made a decision or you told someone not to make a decision they were thinking about and they did it anyway and it turned out just as poorly as you told them it would and it actually ended up hurting you and they needed mercy. In that case, it was unearned. You, you give mercy expecting nothing in return. Or did you play a game of mercy growing up or pinochle, it's called, which is a game that grew up and became ultimate fighting, in my opinion. I've got you in an arm bar or a choke hold, but you could tap out, which is a signal for mercy. I know you could kill me, but please spare me. You're merciful when you release the choke hold, but don't miss this. In real Jesus-type mercy, the merciful person may never put someone in the choke hold to begin with. Now, you might be thinking that mercy sounds a lot like grace, and they really are two sides of the same coin, but they're distinct. Mercy is not giving someone what they deserve, while grace is giving someone what they don't deserve. Let me try to illustrate. If you're a parent who has a child, then you know that that kid has at some point disobeyed you and maybe even intentionally gone out of their way to oppose you and break your rules. Now, I'm not telling you to ignore that, but go with me here and maybe it's a teaching moment. If mercy clicks inside of you and you decide not to send that kid to their room or suffer a punishment like more chores or whatever, you have decided to not give them what they deserve. Grace, on the other hand, steps in and says, not only am I not going to give you what you deserve, I'm going to give you something you don't deserve and take you out for ice cream. Again, probably works best if you can use it as a teaching moment. Jesus says, blessed are the merciful, for they will be shown mercy. One of the repeated themes you can find throughout this teaching of Jesus is the link between your relationship with God and your relationship with other people. There's a connection between how God has acted towards us how we act towards others, and once again, how God promises to move towards us in response to that. What has to take place, for lack of better words, is a mercy sandwich. First, I receive God's mercy, right? I understand that God is not giving me something that I deserve. He's giving me mercy. Short story, there's a penalty or a punishment we deserve when we don't follow God's ways, and yet he tends to overlook it. That's mercy. When you've received that and embrace it, then you are in position to extend mercy to other people. You simply cannot give to someone else what you have not received. And what Jesus says here is that when you're extending mercy to people, you are blessed because you can expect once again, likely referring to the end of your life, standing before God, the ultimate mercy to be shown to you from God. So to truly live the good life, you first receive God's mercy, then you extend that mercy to someone else, knowing once again you will receive God's mercy. Two big takeaways. Number one, have you experienced and received God's mercy? Have you ever admitted your need for that? Can you believe that it's even possible to receive that? Number one is to throw yourself at the mercy of God. The second one is this, where do you need to extend mercy to others? It's impossible to believe that you're good with God and yet mistreat or condemn other people. That only shows that we don't understand what we've received. The real test of our relationship with God is shown by how we love people. So where or to whom do you need to show mercy? Blessed are the merciful, for they will be shown mercy.